<laughs> I don't even leave the house now unless I got a ring or a parade schedule. Mookie Betts is just oh my my spectacular. Lord. Yeah, I'm gonna get to Mookie in a second. Let me start with this. So during our show yesterday, the story came out. Jane Slater, she'll be on our show uh, later. Great reporter on the Cowboys for years. Multiple players saying our coaches are unprepared. They don't teach. Uh, we don't buy into it. And Mike McCarthy came out yesterday and he said, well, you know, you know it's the system. We've got a new system. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are defending Mike McCarthy. It is a new system. I would like to see a system where the players quit because that's what's happening in Dallas. That must be a revolutionary new system I'm not up on. Players quit. Arizona scored on a on a end-of-the-game handoff that was trying to kill the clock. <laughs> um, it's not just about losing. Brian Flores lost last year, and we kept saying over and over, boy, they are getting better every week. I'd said it about the New York Giants this year. The New York Giants are losing, but they're getting a little better every week. The players are buying in. The Bengals this year have a, have a win and a tie. They, re they look really promising. Cliff Kingsbury last year was 5-11, and 11, but nobody was calling him out with a new system. It was like, you know what? He's a really good fit for Kyler Murray. Mike McCarthy's a bad fit right now in the NFL. Dallas players aren't playing hard. Last five games, they've given up 39, 38, 49, 34, 38. And you know what? We should not have been surprised by this. My bad. Because the most front-facing public figure in the NFL, Aaron Rodgers, had open contempt for him for three years. Because when Mike McCarthy, who won a Super Bowl, got fired in Green Bay, no takers. And then he started doing something that I've always been skeptical of my entire life. He started trying too hard to tell you he was current. My wife always says that. Colin, you got to stay current. And it's like, that's good because I've always liked new music. I don't listen to classic rock and roll. I'll listen to anything. I don't care if it's new country, new hip-hop. I like new music. It's just my makeup. That's what I like. I like new stuff. I don't collect baseball cards. I don't collect anything. I don't collect anything. That's just not my thing. So... And staying current matters because I used to work at a company. Four letters, not going to get into it. But uh, in the last 10 years, there's been a big pivot in our business from just TV to digital. And some people, some executives, it's natural. They like new stuff. It's in their DNA. They love digital. They love podcasting. Then a lot of guys fake it. They panic. They got two kids in college. They got to save money. And they're dinosaurs. And that's Mike McCarthy. He's trying to tell you how progressive he is. Andy Reid's been progressive for a decade. He doesn't need his buddies in the media to sell it. Pete Carroll is letting Russ cook. He's going against what his whole career. He's Pete Carroll. He got fired in the NFL before the USC job. He started going to these classes. He like, he like broke down his football coaching. He started over again. And it's really who, if you know Pete the surfer, it's who Pete is. Belichick's always been highly academic. Belichick's always been ahead of the curve, always moving ahead of the curve. He was the first guy to like midfield, fourth down. We're going for it. It's natural. It's not for Mike McCarthy, but he's trying to sell you on it. And I think Mike McCarthy, who's still a fairly young guy, got fired in Green Bay and he got scared. I've seen executives in my business do this. They panic and they're trying to sell you. They love the new world and they really don't. Mike McCarthy admitted it at the press conference when he got hired by the Dallas Cowboys. He did. McCarthy. I need to confess. I mean, I told Jerry I watched every play of the 2019 season, but I wanted the job. Um, <laughs> I, 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 have, I, I haven't watched every play of the season, but it, it was just, uh, I mean, you do what you got to do, right? It's like the dad whose daughter forces him to go on TikTok and he pretends like he likes it, but he doesn't really like it. It's not him. And I'm not saying it's for everybody. But a couple of weeks ago, Joy was here. I kept saying McCarthy was going to the podium after games and during the week. And he was dropping all this like analytic jargon. And it was like, dude, you're trying way too hard to sell me on it. Andy Reid, for 10 years, spends his offseason, he'll, he'll send me pictures of it, drawn up his plays. He loves it. It's who he is. He's not faking it. He doesn't talk about it at the podium. I am always suspicious of people who are trying to sell me something. If you go to a really nice car dealership or a really nice boat dealership, you go to a Mercedes dealership or, uh, you know, like high end, you know what they do? Look around. 
They're not selling you. We got the best stuff. Look around. But you go to a used car salesman, this prelude may be a 1988. It runs like a top. Push, sell, push, sell. You're trying too hard. Turn off. Mike McCarthy's trying too hard to sell his system. Trying too hard to tell you he's into analytics. He's not, it's not who he is. And that's okay. Some people get to 55 years old and they're done. And they don't want to grow. We, we, I see it all the time with political people. They talk about politics. Some people just grab on the past. They romanticize the past. They're not growers. They're not curious. It's just not who they are. They just want to go to their country club, play golf with people just like them. And that's fine. There's a lot of room in America for that. And then there are people like Bill Belichick who are just academically curious. His mom spoke seven languages. It's, it's in his DNA, his genetics. Bill is just a thinker. He's always moving. Andy Reid and the Pete Carroll. By the way, Nick Saban's the same way. Nick Saban is always trying new stuff on offense, considering he's almost 70 years old. McCarthy's one of those guys. He hit 55, and now he's panicking. And now he's desperate. Now he's trying to sell you on, hey, I use lingo and jargon and it's like no, dude this is not who you are Th this is players and by the way players aren't buying it dallas players aren't buying it it's not losing miami's not really a good football team they've beaten the jets they've beaten the jags they beat a beat up 49ers team miami's not really a great team they weren't a great team last year but incrementally every week they get a little better and that tells you they buy in they buy in. Arizona, same thing. They're buying in to Cliff Kingsbury. They're buying in to Brian Flores. These Cowboys are out. They are Seacrest out. They're not buying this stuff. All right. Um, there's a lot of good baseball players. There's a lot of stars in baseball. They're very productive. Eh, nobody quite like Mookie Betts of the Dodgers. Dodgers have been good for years, and they've got a bunch of stars. They never have Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts is baseball in the 70s and 80s. Fast, some power, can hit. Last night's classic. Gets on base, steals second, steals third, scores on a chopper with the infield pulled in. That's 70s, 80s baseball. There were a lot of guys that played like Mookie Betts in the 70s and 80s. They weren't as good as Mookie Betts. But this guy is juice. This guy is energy. There are 19 guys in Major League Baseball right now with one of these absurd 10, 11, 12-year contracts. There's two I'd do it with, Mike Trout and Mookie Betts. And in fact, if I was the Angels, I would have sold Trout because he's so expensive for the Angels, not a huge revenue team. He'll probably limit their upside going down, you know, down through the years. Mookie Betts is a 12-year contract. That's a 10-year contract. That is a catalyst. By the way, a lot of guys, John Carlos Stanton for the Yankees is a great player. He's not a leader. He just, he hits bombs. This kid, this reminds me of the 49ers for years and years and years. The San Francisco 49ers were good and they couldn't beat the Cowboys. They couldn't beat the Dallas Cowboys. And they went out and got Deion Sanders <laughs> and they won a Super Bowl. And it was like, they had a bunch of great players. Niners had great players everywhere. The Cowboys had great players and a little juice. And Dion was the energy. He was the juice. He was sort of the swagger. He was the catalyst. And suddenly the Niners were unbeatable. There are uh, there, a lot of guys in baseball are productive and we call them stars. They're fast, but have no power. They got power, but they got no speed. Mookie is the five tool. He does everything well. He literally in a, in a roster full of stars plays the game differently. Cody Bellinger said it after the game. If, if you're a baseball diehard or you're a casual baseball fan, which I am, if you can't spot that, I mean, that's an easy one. That, that is, I understood the Red Sox, you know, there's a lot of money and the Red Sox are kind of cutting back and trimming payroll. I get it. And I don't understand almost all of these 19 guys in baseball with these absurd 10-year contracts. They're all garbage. They're, none of them are worth it. This guy, that's a 10-year contract or a 12-year contract. Boom, I'll sign off on it. Cody Bellinger after. Yeah, it's really unbelievable. It's so fun to watch and we're so lucky to have him on our team. Um... I just say, like, he's a superstar guy, superstar talent, but he does all the little things right, and it's you can really learn from that when a guy's that good and he just wants to win and, uh, like I said, just continues to do the small things that go unnoticed by a lot of people, maybe not, but it, it's really special. And, and, again, Bellinger's a star, Seager's a star, Clayton Kershaw was great last night, Dodgers won 8-3, but when you watch this team, they have been so good for years. 
They just put a catalyst. They just put energy and juice in this operation. And I said it yesterday. If you gave the Dodgers a closer and their bullpen's not good, and this is going to be a good series, it's not going to be quick because the Dodgers' bullpen is bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to give up leads. You know, Tampa's going to come from behind and win a game or two in this series, and it's not over. But what you're seeing there is, it reminded me so much of 70s and 80s baseball. Get on, steal second, steal third, cat and mouth, manipulate the game. A run scored that should... 